What is going on everybody? Welcome to part 16 of our data analysis with Python and Pandas tutorial series. In this part, what we're going to be talking about is incorporating scikit-learn for machine learning uh, on our data set here to see if we can figure something out, at least at a basic level as far as machine learning is concerned, to uh, check the current valuations for, you know, like the current housing price index, the GDP, SP500, unemployment, stuff like that and if we can accurately predict whether or not the housing price index will rise or fall. So in the previous tutorial we already created the label and all of that, so in this tutorial all we have to do now is actually feed this through. First we're going to need scikit-learn, so if you don't already have it, what you want to do is do the usual pip install uh, sklearn, or if you need to give the full path c colon slash python uh, you know, 34 scripts pip install sk learn already have it so I'm good to go so close this and we're ready to rumble so we'll come up to the very top here and we're gonna go ahead and do from sk learn import I need SVM preprocessing and cross validation SVM is short for support vector machine which is what we'll be using then you've got uh, preprocessing that converts your data to a range of negative one to positive one, or at least that's the goal. Uh, generally, that can help improve machine learning uh, algorithm classification, you know, accuracy, but doesn't necessarily. Cross validation, we'll use that to create test and uh, training sets. So first, um, like I was saying in the previous tutorial, machine learning doesn't. I mean, it, it's a complex subject, but to utilize machine learning is not complex. I often equate it to understanding, you know how an engine works or how a car works as opposed to just knowing how to get the utility out of the car to drive the car okay so I guess if Tesla and Uber have their way that analogy uh, won't really be that useful in like five years but for now uh, it is so uh, choosing let's do the right estimator scikit-learn cool um, so with sklearn generally all you have to do is create the features create the label feed it through to train it and then you can test it. It's super easy. Uh, the only thing is, you know, figuring out what estimator to use or the, which algorithm to use, but there's a nice flow chart for that. Start right here. Do you have greater than 50 samples? If not, you need to get more data, but we do. So are you predicting a category? Yeah, we want to predict either uh, it goes up or it doesn't. Do you have labeled data? Yeah, we sure do. Do you have 100,000 samples? Uh, or do you have less than 100,000 samples? Yes do linear SVC. If that doesn't work, is it takes text data? No. So then you do K nearest or well K neighbors. And then if that's not working, just SVC or ensemble like uh, random forest or something like that. So anyways, we're going to close this and just do simple SVM. So now what we do is we need to create basically the feature sets. Generally you create those uh, like so. So we don't need this rolling apply example. I just wanted to show it. Uh, how it was done in the previous tutorial. So generally you have your features are a capital X and your labels will be a lowercase y. Doesn't have to be but that's usually how people do it. So X is what? Well it is uh, the basically it's the housing data so it's np.array on housing data but if we feed through the label and we're training against the label, the machine learning classifier is going to recognize that, oh my gosh, we could use use label, <laughs> right? And it's going to be really accurate. So we have to do housing data dot drop, and then we have to drop that column. And what other column should we probably drop? Well, we should probably drop the US HPI future column because, again, we can't see into the future. And our uh, machine learning classifier is going to realize that that's like 100% correlated, so it's going to take that and we're going to be really accurate all of a sudden. So we need to drop those two columns, so we will. So we're going to drop a label and we drop uh, US HPI future. We drop both those. So we're going to convert that to an array, drop those. We're going to take uh, just one there because we're for the drop, basically. Uh, so what this is going to return is the data frame without house, without these columns. Now, so that's x. So we can go ahead, we could like print x if you want to see x. We'll just say y is equal to 0 for now, so it works. So here's x. It's just a bunch. It's a massive NumPy array. Now, y 
is going to be equal to, um, oh, and the other thing we want to do is, uh, actually, we're going to say x is equal to, we're going to take all of this, and then we're going to wrap preprocessing around it. We could either wrap preprocessing around it or just do it second. So let's just, let's just do another line because this line's long. x equals preprocessing dot scale x. Again, that converts the data to a hopeful range of negative one to positive one. It, like I said before, can improve accuracy, it won't necessarily. Uh, it rarely hurts you though to do that. So then, um, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna say y is equal to a numpy array of housing underscore data label. So now y is our features, or sorry, y is our classification or our label. X is our features. So now we can train and test. Now scikit-learn has a really easy way to do that to split it up. So we're going to say x underscore train, x underscore test, y underscore train, y underscore uh, test equals cross underscore validation dot train underscore test underscore split and we pass x, y, and then we can say how big the test size is. Test size equals do 0.2, so 20%. Okay, so what is this? What cross-validation does for you, where we've imported that from sklearn, what this does is, well, this whole module does a lot of things, but first of all, we can do a train and test split. We can throw in the data to this function here. So this is our features and our labels. We throw that in, and we say how big we want the test size to be. So 0.2 means 20%. So this means we'll train on 80% of the data, and then we'll test against 20%. So that gives us those. Now, we specify a classifier that we want to use for machine learning. We figured out it was SVM, so we're going to say CLF equals SVM dot, and we'll do SVC, and we'll say that kernel <coughs> is going to be linear. So we'll do linear SVC here, and then to basically what we'll do to train, this is how you train a classifier, clf.fit, and then we fit against x, the train data for x, and then y, train. So now it's fit, that's train it, now we can test it. So we do print clf.score, and then this is x, test, y, test, and that's it. So we can save and run that, that's a lot of code, but we can do it. And at least at the outset, we're 73.5% accurate. But when you ran this, you might find your data is, your value is 40%. Who knows? Like, let's run this again. Oh, we got even more accurate. 69.8% accurate. 75. So we're actually coming out pretty accurate here. Um, that's a little more accurate than I thought we would actually end up being, to be honest. Uh, let's run it a couple more times. Okay, well, whatever. Uh, so apparently we're doing pretty good. Uh, let's run through the code real quick again because if you get data that, that that's that good, you probably want to recheck things. Uh, we don't have... Okay, so X test, Y test. Uh, we dropped housing data. So these are... Oh, basically, this is what we really want to see. Um, so let's take this copy. Let's go ahead and print that information. And um, what we're doing is we're looking for a column that uh, would be a bad one to have. So United States, well that's our current HPI so we don't need to drop that. We don't need to drop any of the states. And again we were 73.5% accurate. Okay, Delaware, VA. We are truncating some but that's all states. Then we have United States, the mortgage 30 year, unemployment rate, that's valid, GDP, SP5, okay, well, shoot. I guess we're billionaires, maybe I shouldn't release this tutorial because we're pretty darn good at predicting uh, changes in the S&P 500, or the S&P 500, the uh, housing market, so maybe I'll just keep this tutorial for myself. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so, okay, fine. So, so we're pretty accurate, apparently, at predicting, oops, shouldn't be printing this out, uh, at predicting changes in the uh, housing price index. I mean, we're pushing 70s to 80s on average here every time. So, um, anyway, that's pretty cool. So, <laughs> I guess uh, becoming a billionaire is plug and play.
I'm still kind of skeptical, but I mean, we just looked at all the columns that we were passing through there. I don't think we're doing any cheating or bias here. Um, but I just can't believe it would be that easy. I thought we would surely need a little bit more data to uh, start getting into the 70s even, but okay. I accept it, I guess. Um, don't forget about me when you invest and become a billionaire, I suppose. Okay, so anyway, that's machine learning. <laughs> um, if you guys have questions, comments, concerns, whatever, leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support subscriptions. Till next time.